Hello, Scott. I guess we had to get through the uh, the briar patch before we started the show today. Okay, Scott, first thing. Save yourself, that's right. Because if you won't put in the effort to do it, and people listening won't, they won't get saved. They might believe they will, but they'll be compelled to reincarnate back on this planet or some other planet with no memory over and over again. It's called reincarnation. People think it's normal in God's will. It is not. It was, so done, they are looking the out. It was done by tyrants out in galactic history. Two people, many of them human, a long time ago. That's how the entire population got to be on this planet today with no memory. Seven and a half billion people, most of whom do not know who they are, what they are that isn't this, haven't got a clue. They got faith, they believe in things, but they don't know. And they're convinced that they're not capable of knowing. <clears throat> Anybody convinced of that is not going to allow themselves to know anything until they drop that facade, that illusion. They have to want to drop it first. That means their vibration has to be raised up considerably first before they can even begin to let go of that stuff. It's been a habit, an attachment of theirs, a subconscious program running in them for some people millions of years, hundreds of thousands of years, <clears throat> tens of thousands of years. And the real crux of the matter is that people on earth today, <clears throat> not one of them ever originated here as a being. The bodies they have right now were just acquired recently. But that's not their true history, what it is on this earth since they were born. That's a joke. Are you kidding? People are going to live 80 years and say, now I'm an old man. I lived a long life. Now I get to die and go to heaven. Nice belief, but that's not how it works. The truth is, you take with you when the body dies exactly what you're aware of, no more and no less. If you have all your baggage and all your fears of the future and all your hates and prejudices and everything, <clears throat> when you leave the body, they go with you. And those things compel a person generally to seek out another body and, and incarnate again, to try to get right what they could not make go right in the lifetime they just lived. It's a program, a subconscious program. An energy field that surrounds the true energy of the being, which is spherical. It's transparent, and they look through it and see distortions and feelings of what's really out there. And they look into it and try to see out into the multiverse again and know things, and they get terrorized subconsciously. Because the terror says, if you try to look out there and find out stuff and know who you are, remember what we did to you, these tyrants will come and they say and do it again. Which isn't true because they've been eliminated from this equation on this earth. They're not here. They're not coming back here. So people are just left with the program. And the program goes with them when the body ceases to function. So it's important that people become aware that something was done to them, first of all, without their consent long ago that put them here on this planet, incarnating with others with no memory. I mean, nothing. Occluded, suppressed. Some people see glimpses of past lives. It's about it. And how can people remove these programs, Scott? They cannot remove them themselves. They're subconscious, meaning they're not aware of where they were placed and when it was done to them or how. How are you going to remove that? Pretty clever. So it takes other beings in the universe, not just on Earth and in other dimensions that are free of such things, who are experienced in undoing such things to cross paths with people on earth to help them. Because people on earth cannot set themselves free this way. Technology was used on them that's millions, that's very old. And it was abused most strongly in this galaxy half a million years ago on captured human worlds, on world systems where people were captured in war. We know the bad guys lost the war. A lot of humans vanished. I'm talking about the energy that makes up the atma now, which is not made of neutrons and protons and electrons. It's um, finer than that. 
Tyrants even know that the Atma or soul exists, but they can't destroy or harm it. They can just create an illusion around it. You get that being to use its own energy that comes from the source of all life itself against itself. To imagine negative things and be afraid creates opposite imaginations that are opposed. Good and bad, happiness, sadness. I want great things for myself and my kids and the future of the planet, and I'm terrorized there's going to be a nuclear war. Splits the being in half in the use of their energy. And the two ground each other to the earth. It keeps people stuck, grounded in bodies without any memory. That's the real truth of it. You don't hear this in universities. Top PhDs on this planet, classified or non-classified, don't know it. They can't teach it. They can't undo it, even to themselves. So they all grab for little pieces of power to feel a little loftier than the rest of us out of desperation. They can't help it. They're just as stuck as the rest of us in their own way. When you understand this and have recovered this in within your own being enough to understand it, you don't really blame tyrants so much for what they do. You go back far enough in galactic history and in interdimensional history and planetary history, you begin to see how it was done to them in more horrible ways first, drove them to be the tyrants they are. You go back further than that, you begin to understand that you had a co-creative part as a being, as a soul, somewhere in eternity in creating this mess we call the experiment of evil. Lies and deceit and domination and cruelty and all these things. They, are, they were never created or meant to be permanent. There is no such thing as a permanent hell anywhere. Nor is there a permanent heaven as people think of it. There are higher worlds above the lower dimensions where the good and bad reign. And we all come from there originally. If people want to recover who they are, they need to return to that source while they're still alive in a body on any planet and bring back the awareness of it. That's what changes consciousness. That's what helps a person save themselves. And it takes, obviously, raising the vibration in ways that are significant, that people aren't used to having their vibration raised that much. That takes a channel, not a psychic channel, not from another being, not anybody coming through anybody else. It takes the pure hue or first sound behind creation that is not an individual being, but a living force to work through you or from others who can co-creatively move it through them to you in order for it to connect to the source inside yourself and begin to rise it to the surface to wake it up to what it once knew. That's how this works. You gotta raise the vibration first or people cannot see anything. They're just like this, trying to look and see what truth is on planet Earth. They don't even know if there's life on other planets. That's how suppressed people on earth are from their original awareness. That means there's a history out there, suppressed, occluded, shut down in people on earth. Going back billions of years, they have no idea how old they are as a being. A being is energy, but it's not physical matter. It is energy, but of a type much higher in vibration than people understand on earth. And it has the capability to move around the multiverse, multi-dimensions, back to the source, above the void known to the Buddhists, and go all kinds of places once it starts to rehabilitate, remembering, recovering. It wants to know how to do this. Enlightenment is more about remembering what you are and what your destiny is as a being, co-creatively, than it is attaining some higher, loftier state in the future. People want to become enlightened and they're always looking at the future. I'm going to be 
God realized them. That's an energy that pushes that experience away from them, receding forever into the distance while they're running towards it. You can't catch it that way. A person really has to go recover what their awareness is like as a spherical energy being, not the body. And then look out from that into all directions, into the multiverse, because it can connect right into that one omnipresent living energy field that is in everything, connecting everything on every plane in every dimension throughout the grand multidimensional universe. From the highest planes far above the void known to most Buddhist monks, there are many above that void. Through the void, down into the realm of the Atma, which is the first major division above the void in the pure worlds, down through the physical worlds all the way down to earth. We didn't come from the physical universe. We didn't originate here. You know, all of us as Atmas, <clears throat> because we came into existence, or how do you say it without people trying to put it in earth terms and ruin it? We've always existed. What the energy is that makes up each individual, each soul, each Atma, <clears throat> is not made of physical matter. It's not atomic in nature. It does not obey or combine by or work under the law of physics. It can move through space and time effortlessly far beyond what people think of as the speed of light easily and it has no physical laws over it not the black hole not the, the center of the galaxy not a super sun gravitational fields or any of that because it isn't it does not it's not affect it can't be affected by lower energies in that way it can affect lower energies but it cannot be affected by them. That's no other way I can have of, of sharing that with people uh, until they recover and awaken it within themselves first. But I can head them in the right direction. And then it's up to each individual to have the inspiration and the courage to want to experiment and explore and exercise their dormant faculties until they recover who they are. And they're all capable of it. So, underneath the primary implant, which is subconscious, and was put there by tyrants in galactic history, in beings that now live on Earth and don't know it was ever done to them, they don't remember. At the core of our being, its true energy nature is comprised of exactly, precisely, identically the same energy as the very source behind all life itself, the supreme being, God, source, prime creator, as people call it from other worlds in our galaxy. We are exactly the same thing as it on a smaller scale, like a pure drop of water individualized forever in this huge ocean of the same water. And what makes up this huge ocean are individual beings. If you take time and space out of the equation, you forget about time and space and linear time, aging and dying and lives and eternity and the age of a sun is billions of years and then it dies and all that kind of thing. And you move it aside. Then you're operating in the same place you always operated from as a divine being or as a source being. The time and space is not a factor, which means you did not get created by some super being at some point in space and time, because that's just the lower dimensions. Time and space don't exist up there. So how old are you? as an individual in eternity. You cannot measure 
the age of an atma in terms of physical matter. That is quite impossible because it isn't physical matter. It is energy. And if you can't do that, then if you go back to the source of all things, who was responsible for creating good and evil, lower dimensions, reincarnation, deaths and lives, negative things, positive things, forgetfulness, tyrants, good guys fighting bad guys and all that kind of thing. Who created that whole game? In eternity at the source of all things beyond time and space, the answer is simple, but very hard for people to understand, accept. They can't change anything until they can accept this. You can't blame the Supreme Being for it, and you're somehow out of it, a victim. You can't blame the devil and blame that and say you're out of it and you're a victim. Every single living thing in creation created the experiment of evil in the lower dimensions only. That means we're all responsible for it on some level. And if we want to end it, if we want to end this experiment of evil, not just for us on Earth, but all over the whole multidimensional universe, change the way it's run for the better, then we have to be awake enough to co-create, contributing to those fantastic numbers of beings beyond Earth that are engaged in doing this right now for the first time. And the only way you can contribute to that is if you're awake enough to co-creatively contribute to it. Otherwise, you just stay a victim and, all, and say you're the effect of all these other people's negative causes. But that's a cop-out because way down deep, underneath it all, we all had a hand on some level, beyond time, in making this the way it is. Here's what I've discovered. People have been asking since time immemorial, particularly on this planet, and I separate that out from other worlds because it's not the same on other planets. On this planet, people have been contemplating what their destiny as a being, why they exist, and never getting any answers out of 10,000, 10 million lifetimes. There is an answer. And they carry it with them at the core of their being, looking for it outside everywhere else, from other beings and things who don't know either. There's only one real reason as to why individual beings like us exist. And that is to one day be enlightened enough, awake enough, aware enough, take responsibility enough on a divine level, on a higher plane level, to, to understand that our purpose is to be trustworthy, conscious co-creators, co-creators with the source, the supreme being, God, eternity. That is our destiny and our purpose. A purpose of a being running a human body on earth is so fantastic, they have no idea, most people, that they have any destiny like this at all, and yet they do. Because they're not bodies, they are beings made of the same energy, and our, our real purpose is to gather experience in the lower dimensions, not be stuck in bodies and the illusion that we're a body and return to the source from whence we came and download into that source what we've discovered about new ways of doing things like how to run the four lower dimensions without the experiment of evil what do we replace it with and keep it all intact that's the biggest larger problems that advanced beings work on master teachers, master, spiritual masters people think of. Very advanced beyond Earth's history entirely, way out in creation. That's what they work on.
They work on how to solve the bigger problems. To do that, you have to create new ways of running the universe. In the past, the four lower dimensions, what people call etheric, mental, causal, astral, physical, were destroyed completely. All the galaxies, everything. The atmos were drawn up, rest for a while, they rebuilt the lower dimensions, stuck them all in it again, and they, in a long period of time, the same results always happen. We end up at this place of destroying ourselves, not just as a planet, but on a galactic scale, on an interdimensional scale. And this has played out many times and nothing's ever changed. So, for the first time, how to run the lower dimensions differently that will work without destruction is what's underway now. This is why I'm on this planet, to help bring that type of thing into reality here, for the benefit of all life here. There's no greater game in town on any planet. From experience, I can only say that human beings, not the bodies, have the ability to know the supreme source itself and understand it. Of course, they don't believe that. That's the purview of uh, the supreme God itself and us little peons aren't allowed to know any of that. Well, that's just not true. That's what people is more ignorant than the people they lead have been telling people on this planet for money and power and control, usually sponsored and paid for by tyrant kings who ran the priests on this planet. And that was inspired from negative beings from off planet. It's not an easy truth for people to confront who have been brainwashed since birth for lifetimes, thinking incorrectly about who they are and what they're capable of doing. The creative imagination isn't made up in the brain. It is something the Atma, the true being, uses to get around the universe, to go there, to go here, to bring back wisdom, to go into the past, to, to re review history, to go and associate with beings from other worlds. You don't need a spaceship for that. That's the slow way. Fun, I guess, get on a ship, go thousand miles, thousand times faster than the speed of light, go through interdimensional doorways, come out the other end of the ship, land on a planet, get in, then the crew goes in, has to clean out the toilets on the spaceship, you know, that kind of thing. That's how people think. There are people in craft that are very evolved that fly over this galaxy, all over the galaxies too. But they do it basically for the benefit of younger races who don't have their evolution, their advancement. Races that travel the stars, if they're kind, can get in and out of their bodies on the world they're on or while they're on a ship and travel wherever they want to go. From an earth person's perspective who doesn't yet remember any of this, it's a very difficult thing for them to make the leap into recovering how to do this for themselves. It's suppressed in them, but their higher faculties to do this are not lost or destroyed. They're just subconscious, which means they need to be made conscious. Because then they can take that conscious ability out of the body, put the body in the trance state, an automatic called sleep, let it run healthy and fine, and go out and explore and do things and create and come back. Because that's how we're meant to operate as beings. Only tyrants want beings thinking they're stuck in bodies or that they are physical bodies. That is the work of tyrants. Only. You could say that if you had a source energy way up here, and we came from that, and then you have a void that divides the upper worlds from the lower, then you have the positive and negative in the lower worlds. That each being, when they go in the lower worlds, is supposed to have an objective understanding of the body they're running on each division or dimension. 
They're not supposed to be spiraled into thinking they're a body. Something intervened in their journeys in the lower worlds. You might say that here's the source, the real source, which is not evil or good, which just supports and sustains all life. We come from that. And then there's these guys playing in the lower dimensions, the astral and causal and the physical galaxies that set themselves up to be your God and demand you worship them or you're dead or worse. And they convince people in galactic and earth history to worship the source of all life on your knees, begging for forgiveness. And if you don't, that supreme God will smite you and destroy you in a bolt of lightning. That is the teaching of tyrants only. It is not coming from the source behind all life. It means that there are beings propping themselves up as gods to be worshipped between that source and us here. And that's real galactic history. And that's real earth history. When a person can confront the truth of this for themselves, not only do they know that they are something that is eternal and indestructible, but they're able to live it, see it, know it, and move it around. I hope that makes sense. I can only share the truth with people. And they have the right on the plan they think they do to worship anybody or anything any way they wish. They can believe what they want, but until faith of whatever they believe in leads to real experience, real enlightenment, real knowing, they're not going to be really valuable as a co-creator to that source because they don't know how to do anything. They just get in the way selfishly get in the way instead of actually help. So it's important that people recover who they are. That is not a physical body. Never was. Never will be. That's the first step towards really recovering all of what people, what we all once knew, the certainty. A normal atma, a normal soul, knows things with certainty. They do not work with doubt or fear or speculation, or theory, or debate, or argument, ever, and will shy away from it at the first sign of it. A waste of time entirely. Nothing productive can come from it. No real experience or gain can come from any negative emotional expression. Because it's negative. It creates negative results and reactions. So it's not possible to make gains being in theory, speculation, fear and doubt, and talking and dealing in those areas. Total waste of time completely. I want to make that clear, and maybe this will be of some help to some people because a lot of people are really ready. When I say these things, it reaches in and they suddenly go, wow, I knew that. How did I forget that? Of course I knew that. I'm not teaching them anything they don't know. I'm simply helping wake up what they do that they've forgotten or been made to forget it. And not in nice ways in their real history. Okay. We should do a little exercise to raise the vibration considerably from where it is right now. Because it would be a big waste of my time and yours, Perry, and the people I work with from other worlds and other realities. If I didn't just tell the truth right out flat, whether they want to hear it this way or that, I'm not going to bend the truth to fit somebody else's religious belief or fear of the unknown or any of that because it wastes my time and it wastes theirs. I'm going to tell them, that I'll just say that what I'm sharing, they once knew. Whether they know it now or not, they did. Because they are an atma being. They're not a body. And that knows. Take away that field of energy around it that distorts its perceptions, and it knows. So that's what we're about doing. A lot of time here and there, get people creatively inspired. Like childlike wonder of the grand nature of the multiverse, to explore and enjoy adventuring in it freely without fear. That's our destiny. 
has to start somewhere. I'm going to send out these tones because they connect into that primary source, prime creator, through a living energy that radiates from that source through the entire multidimensional universe, connects and holds up and maintains all things, balance, galaxies spinning on their axis, planets spinning around stars, spinning around the center of a galaxy, galaxies revolving around each other and many levels and so forth and so on. Beings running bodies on those planets beyond count into the trillions. Life so far advanced and so much, so much more of it that people on Earth haven't got any idea anymore exists at all. And yet it's all out there. It isn't going to become like us one day. Most of the life out there is more advanced than we are on this planet now. And we need to join them, not the other way around. Okay, imagine someone you love and respect and you're grateful that whatever that is, is in your life. It's the kind of thing when you first imagine it, think about it, it makes you smile. Just does it automatically. That opens a doorway. From the core of your being, which is not the brain, it's not in the center of the brain. It's not the body. It is the spherical nature of being running that brain and that body. If it wasn't there, the body would sit there like a vegetable and do nothing. The brain wouldn't think, nothing would work. The body would atrophy and die. It takes an atma running it for it to have motivation, animation to be alive, even for the heart to work. Okay, put all your concerns for the future of this planet and your own future, fear, negativity of any kind aside, just for this time. Put it on a shelf in your imagination, in your room, on the floor, on the ground. You pick it up when we come back and deal with it and master it after that. For now, we're not going to take any of that with us. When I send out these tones, it stimulates the pineal gland in the center of the brain to secrete melatonin, create serotonin, which puts the body in the trance state we call sleep, what you do to it every night, and puts it on automatic. It keeps the heart working and the lungs working while you, the being, are gone. There's an energy connection, unbreakable. It's not an astral cord or a silver cord or anything like that between you, the Atma, that runs that body on automatic, and you could be millions of light years away, and it'll still run just fine. Because the energy that connects you to it is not of the lower planes. It cannot be penetrated by or influenced by anything of any negative nature whatsoever. That's not possible. This is just like you do when you put the body down for sleep at night and you have the habit of going unconscious with the body when it goes to sleep. You really aren't. You're stepping out of the body when it goes into the trance and you're traveling the multiverse, visiting other forms you have, in higher planes, coming back with no memory because that's your habit. Because you weren't brought up to think differently or imagine differently or even to remember where you are and what you're doing when you're out of your body. So this has to change. You have to co-create bringing back awareness. It doesn't just come and land on your head. Why? Because you're a god and a goddess and you have a co-creative right and responsibility to create what you expect this omnipresent first sound behind all creation to bring to you. 
that responds to your true free will, what you imagine is what it responds to, good and bad. So we don't want to take any negative emotions or fears with us on this journey. When you come out of your body and go where I'm going to guide you to go, you are, remember this, co-creating, going with me. I'm not just doing it to you. You're not the effect of me. I'm not your tyrant. I'm not your guru for who you should worship or put on a pedestal or any of that. I'm a fellow being who is helping fellow beings recover who and what they are. You 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 The body naturally goes into the trance state. Why do I call it a trance? Because the body is in a kind of a hypnotized, that's not the right word. It's in a trance state. That means it's simply running on automatic while you leave and go on a journey. It's safe. Everything's working just fine. It's you would call your body is asleep. When you're out of your body this way, you feel serene. The natural state of the Atma, the real you, is to be in serenity of being. This is quite above vibrations of good and bad, happiness and sadness. It's beyond them. It's a confident state. It's an effortless state of being. Imagine yourself just like you would a beautiful bird or a green grass field or a sunny day or a stream by weeping willow trees or oak trees. Anybody can imagine that. We do it all the time every day. 
Only imagine yourself above your body that's in the trance state, up near your ceiling, looking down on it, sitting there or lying down. It's breathing, heart's working, everything's fine, but you're above it looking at it. Imagine a hummingbird, beautiful colored wings looking at you, flying there, hovering. Now imagine you're at the ceiling looking at your body in the same way you just imagined a hummingbird. No difference, it's the same thing. One you're doing consciously that you're out of your body, the other one you're seeing unconsciously without realizing it. Be above your house or home, up in the sky, up near the clouds, if there are any, looking down on your city and your coastline. You can see all the way down like you have telephoto lens eyes, and you can see through the roof of wherever you are, and you can see an aspect of yourself hovering above the body, and you can see your body there in the trance state called sleep. Everybody's seen a picture of Earth from outer space, from orbit. From looking at it from somebody photographing with telephoto lenses, the Earth from, say, the space shuttle window. Or from the Hubble telescope that looks out and sees all the galaxies out there. Or when it's focused on Earth, it can photograph the North and South Pole, polar ice caps of the planet and all the oceans. And from way out there, you don't see any fences or borders between countries. You don't even see cities. It's just land and ocean, sky, clouds, one world spinning on its axis, traveling around the sun, which you can see off in the distance. Be in orbit above the planet. Just imagine it. You're in the black void of space, looking down on Earth. Only you are an energy being. You don't need to breathe oxygen here. There isn't any. You're an energy sphere. You're spherically shaped like a planet or a sun, but energy. This energy is quite beyond sun energy or nuclear or fissionable uh, energy. The kind of energy you are is not atomic in nature. You can hover here in the physical universe and look at physical matter and not be bothered by it. You can look out in every direction and see the stars of space, billions of them. You can see the moon orbiting the planet and the sun way off in the distance. And when you look now near you, you're going to see many of us in spherical luminous form hovering in a circle in orbit above the planet as if we were a spaceship only. This is the real us. And in the center of this circle is a being who looks like us. His name is Ambassador Torellian. He is an ambassador from the most ancient race that I know of that did not originate in the Milky Way galaxy or Andromeda. And yet they were responsible long ago for helping bring into physical form human bodies like we have that Atmos could run. The bodies needed to be developed to when an atma could run their higher capabilities and faculties through a human form. That was the original uh, intent. When bodies are blocked, when certain genomes on the DNA are shut off because they're just like switches, then the being has a hard time running their higher awareness into that body. This is what's happened to people who live on Earth today. This is reversible. This kind of blocks and kind of demented diabolical stuff that was done to people can be undone. It has to be done very carefully. In orbit up here, you can look around and realize that you are capable of floating as a being in space in a void with no oxygen. 
but it isn't empty as it appears to people when they look with their physical eyes through cameras and photograph it. This black void of space actually has white light with a gold tinge running all the way through it, but it's on a higher frequency than the physical speed of light. And so it's not detectable by people with physical eyes. They can detect this with other instruments, but it is finer than infrared and ultraviolet and X-rays. It is behind all of that. And it connects everything together. It has a sound running through it. Not only is this sound in the physical dimensions of billions upon billions of galaxies, there are parallel dimensions of universes in the physical uh, reality. And then there is other higher dimension, major divisional dimensions, what people call higher heavens in a way, that operate under different laws and are made of finer matter. People have bodies and run lives in those too. Even you do, even though you've forgotten this. Been made to forget it, I should say. When we're sitting here, hovering here around Torellian, you're going to see what you're going to perceive as a masculine and feminine, man and woman, atmas, spherical, appear beside him. And then two more. And then a hundred appear in two concentric circles around them, in between us. If you look around, you'll find someone who you recognize as Perry and me and many others who have listening to the show are on this journey, hovering in a circle around Torellian. It's not to worship Torellian or to put him on a pedestal. No. He serves as a more advanced soul who is, serves as a focal point so we can go on a journey together and stay focused and not get scattered all over the universe. So we can do some constructive good. You can hear this sound in this white light with a gold tinge running through the supposed black void of space. Even scientists on Earth know now that black void is full of living energy. They don't know what to do with it. They can prove it exists. They've done that in the Large Hagron Super Collider in CERN, Switzerland. It doesn't operate according to the laws of physics exactly, which puzzles them. So they call it the God particle. But they know it's something that's there behind all matter. That's kind of like mankind on Earth starting to wake up a little bit. Up here in orbit, in space above the planet, if you listen to the sound, this white light with a gold tinge, little particles running everywhere, you can hear it sounds like the high, thin note of a flute, very high up, very high. And the sound of a million bees, gentle, not harsh, like one humming tone. And the constant sound of the crashing of the ocean against a shoreline on a calm day, that kind of sound. Blended. This will remind you of something. That you once knew what this was, what it is. Understood it. But this isn't foreign to you. It's not the first time you've crossed paths with it. Right now I'm listening to what Torellian is telling me, what he's sharing with me. He does not speak through me. I'm not some kind of channel for other beings. All the beings I work with, the Say Rays, Torellian, the entire Galactic Alliance, Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds, the master teachers that they have, very advanced, that they respect and vice versa. 
do not allow any other beings to channel through them. They talk telepathically, openly, and completely understand one another. There's no need for that. If someone speaks, if I speak, Torellian is not speaking through me. We are communicating, and I may be relaying to you what he's sharing with me, but that's different. I would have to say that what people call divine love is really the ability to respect all life in the grand multidimensional universe on all the levels. If you do that, you're peerless in the eyes of the source, the supreme being. Because then you're respecting all of it. And when you can do that, you can play in all of it. It's just that simple. This hue, this sound, when we tune into it and become conscious of it, begins to change us. It begins to remove the negative things we've picked up along our long journey. And it begins to surface in us the consciousness of the God nature kind, generous, abundant, confident, effortless, co-creative, self-confident, respectful of others, and vice versa. When we can do that, we can play with such beings and go out and enjoy the entire creation and come up with and co-create new ways of making it better for everyone else. This is what we are doing. Corellian is just saying that we're gonna go on a journey. We're not going to the astral plane or the causal or mental or etheric, the four lower divisions, nowhere else in the physical. Because the positive and negative, the good and bad runs through all of it. And it's very deceptive. So it's going to open a little corridor right above us in the void of space. It is a blue violet whirling vortex opening, gently whirling with a wide opening that's wider than all of us in all these concentric circles hovering here in orbit above planet Earth. And you can hear the very high note of a flute drawing us upward. The entire group of us is going to shoot up through this opening. You can see right through the transparent sides of this vortex of energy moving around us upward. And we're going to go up to what is called the void, which is beyond the etheric, but before you get to the first of the upper worlds, which have no negative and positive. Time and space do not exist there. And there is no negative emotions or emotional states of any kind. Remember, we're going to a place we originated from. We're in a dark void. It's not black. It just seems empty. It's not light. It's not dark. It just seems like there's nothing in it. And it seems endless. We're all whirling around Torellian, going through this vortex, which is going off into the distance, upward, and up way ahead at the other end, you can see what looks like a little flash of stars just goes, flashes into existence, and it's very bright. And as we get closer, it widens across the horizon, and it's a white, sandy beach. Could be a pure gold to you by Earth standards. And it, when you look, as we're coming out of this void, we're approaching the shoreline of a new land. You look to the right as far as you can see and to the left, and this white sandy beach seems to go on forever. Beautiful tropical trees that are alight. They're luminous. The sand is glowing. The water gently crashing on the shore is really kind of an illusion. It's just made of the void. 
and we're going over the top of these forests over beautiful pasture lands. In the distance, you can see a long crystal type palace up against snow capped mountain range. And there's a botanical garden, many, many thousand acres. And there's a fountain sitting in the middle of it with white marble steps around it, a clearing. It's made of what looks like white alabaster stone. And it has scalloped edges. And it's on a round white pedestal on a square slab. And there's a statue of a being standing in it, bare chested, bald, bronzed of skin, maybe 36 years old, young but vital, ageless, two gold bracelets on each of his upper arms, and a white tunic dress from his waist down to just above his bare feet. Standing in a square pedestal inside this fountain with his arms down and his palms facing outward, this white light with a gold tinge is pouring from the palms of his hands, filling this bowl. And it flows in a gentle, even, transparent sheet clear around the outside circumference of this white alabaster fountain bowl. And it radiates down to the ground and vanishes in the ground. When you look to your right, you can see a man standing there. It is the same person that's in the statue, smiling with folded arms. He's just watching. He knows we're here. We're welcome. And he's going to ask us if we want to take a little ride. You're going to see a set of semicircular set of white steps lead up to the base of this fountain. And one by one, you're going to see all of us hover up. The statue will turn into a cylindrical shaft of white light with a gold tinge. It comes from many dimensions above here, comes down into this world, this first realm of the upper worlds, to give it life and to keep it luminous. And then it's moved down through the void into the lower dimensions to support them and maintain them. There are always beings who maintain the mechanics of creation. And you're going to see one approaching now down a garden path. He has a, a white robe on, bare feet, bare arms. And when you look at his face, you can't see any features. The energy of what is his face would be is moving. It's constantly flowing in rainbow colors. It is not a being as you understand it. This is just a form he takes so he can even be in the presence of beings on this first plane of the upper worlds. This is a silent one, what is called a silent mentor. They are beings who run the mechanics of creation. You know, keep planes together and doorways between planes running and galaxies spinning and all that kind of stuff. He's here to observe and to bear witness to what we're doing. The Torellian is going to move up inside this fountain energy, this beam of light, this big shaft of light. And all of us are going to go up there with him and hover inside it, listening to the sound. The sound in this new ray, this new consciousness within the omnipresent first sound behind all creation, the hue. When you hue, it mimics or vibrations, sets up sympathetic vibration to the sound itself. Human beings are capable of doing this. It's the way they return home. You. It hears in, inside this beam of light, it sounds like millions of men and women's voices with perfect vocal cords, seeing on many dimensional levels in perfect harmony, this one 
omnipresent, living, supportive sound, spirit, whatever you want to call it. And all we're doing is allowing this energy to flow through the spherical beings that we are, light them up. It's like getting a recharge. And then you slowly come out of that beam and feel yourself walking on the ground somewhere in this garden by the fountain. You'll feel a physical form. It looks like you, but young and healthy and perfect. It's really an energy projection like a physical body that you're projecting from the Atma, the spherical you. If you look up, you can see it yourself hovering there, looking down on this body. It's here to ground, to feel the energy of this place through its feet. Get grounded in this higher world. It runs energy up the top of the head and into the sphere. Each of you has a white core energy center, and it's going into that core. There are birds here, many flowering plants and trees, that look like a blue jay with spherical shaped blue eyes that wrap partially around their head, very beautiful. They have beautiful singing voices and they're singing on many levels to each other. They have vocal cords here. They could speak with you. They have long V-shaped split tails like a swallow, but much longer. Their bodies are rainbow colored in subtle blending. And they have two sets of wings, one above the other, on top of their backs. They can hover like a hummingbird. One of them will come up to each one of you and tell you, you are welcome. And then they'll go about their business, whatever that is. You're going to feel yourself being drawn up above this realm, high in its atmosphere. And there's Torellian and the two couples hovering to each side of them and the three concentric circles of beings who have come from all over the multiverse to be on this journey with us. And then there's the circle of us around that. Perry, myself, whoever else has joined us on this journey hovering in the high blue atmosphere of this first realm, the Atma realm, above the void. There's no negative here whatsoever. And then you look down through this plane, and you look all the way past the void, through the etheric, mental, causal, astral, and you can see yourself still hovering in circles around Torellian, in orbit above planet Earth. You are now in both places at the same moment, as a being, running an aspect of yourself in both locations at once. The next instant, you'll find yourself looking up from orbiting around Torellian and Earth, up through that vortex, all the way up there, and you can see yourself hovering in the high atmosphere above the fountain in this realm of this being named Satnam. Just means true name. And then you look down on earth and smile. And you let the experience of this energy run through the spherical nature of your being, down into the atmosphere of earth, down into wherever you are through the roof of where you are, and you can see yourself hovering above the body, smiling down on it. And it runs this energy through the top of your head, out through your chakras, out through your body, out into the world. Until your energy, the flow through you, encompasses the entire planet, connects with three pyramids, golden, radiant, vibrant, two on the bottom of Earth's deepest oceans, and one inside a mountain in the Himalayas. And they are on, and your energy connects with them, and then it continues out into space for the benefit of others. Then you'll find yourself hovering completely above planet Earth. The vortex above you will vanish. And then you will be the being hovering above your body, wherever that is on Earth. 
smile kindly down on it, send the awareness of the experience into that brain and into them through that body and out into the world. And then when you're ready, open your eyes of your physical body. Each of these journeys, you know, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Good experience today with the silent one. Yeah, they're starting to make their presence known amongst people who are first hearing about this stuff on your show. And that is not something I've ever seen them do before. So they're doing something different. And that's going to make a big difference in people's lives. It certainly will make a difference in the direction this planet is headed. Remember, they control the mechanics of creation. They can change anything. If they want to stop the polar flips of this planet, destroying all life psychically like it has done, they can do it. And they have already done that. It's because of such things that the past prophesied destructive destiny for this world, the Armageddon, has come to a permanent end. People don't know this yet, but the destiny of this planet has been significantly and permanently altered in good ways in the last few years. No one expected it. No one saw it coming. It's definitely going in a different direction. That's a good thing. These kinds of things take practice of the right use of the creative imagination. What people who are listening need to know or need to remember is when they're seeing this stuff and their eyes are closed and their brain isn't on, their body's in the sleep state, they are actually seeing it, the being, not the body. When the eyes are closed, there's nothing coming in from the outside to the brain. It's not seeing anything. Something else is. It's that aspect of us that we need to exercise and get fit again. Use the higher faculties and get used to being confident with them and so that they're effortless and easy. So I will leave everyone with that then and wish everybody wonderful dreams Scott. and just say one word, remember. Uh -huh. Today is our last video of the year, since you have no time and space. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Wish Happy New Year to our audience. Happy New Year then, yes, to everybody. It's coming up on 219 all over the world, and we haven't blown ourselves up yet. What do you know about that? That means all the worry people have done, and all that strain and pressure and fear, they've lived all their lives, was for nothing. All of it meant nothing. The world's still here. It's 2019. There's still nobody blowing everybody up. That means all that worry really meant nothing. Solved nothing, changed nothing. Just made their lives miserable. So these kinds of things will help people get rid of putting their attention into those kinds of things. And it sets people free from that. By changing the way you use the imagination. It's really that simple. It has mastery over all negative lower world things. Always has. When people remember that, they gain back who they are. It's interesting because as the true form and aware of it, there's nothing of a negative nature that can affect you. Not technology, not demons out of bodies, inner out of bodies, extraterrestrials, hidden governments, nothing can affect you in a negative way because it has dominance over it. It was there, all of us were there before those lower things were created. If we go back to that source in ourselves, guess who's in command of changing the world? Collectively. Us and many other beings out in the multiverse that are underway doing this now. So it's all good. Good night, Ben, I'll stop the recording now. Nice see you next.